Hi everyone, I'm Shinda from Shanghai Jiaotu University. I'm happy to introduce our work on improving the performance of RDMA-based keyword store using a machine learning approach. This is a joint work with my advisors Long and Haibo. Keyword store is an important building block in modern data centers, which serves as the storage backend for databases, web applications, and serverless platforms. A common way to design QR store is to use a B tree index to store key value pairs at the server. To serve requests from the outside world, the server is equipped with a fast networking, such as RDMA, which communicates with the clients. The traditional approaches uses remote procedure call, which we call a server centric design. It is server centric because the key value workloads focus on the server CPU. For example, to issue a key value request at a client, say get K1. The client will first send the request to the NIC with a message. The message is then transferred from the client to the server. After receiving the request at the server CPU, the server will traverse the B tree to read the value and send the value back to the client with another message. As we can see, the performance of the server CPU is critical to the server-centric design. However, due to the diminish of Morrow's law, there is an increasing performance gap between the network and CPU. Further, the tree traversal may introduce huge CPU cost due to the poor locality of its success pattern. As a result, the server CPU would first become the performance bottleneck of the keyword stores. To remedy this, there is recently growing interest in leveraging the NIC to process the KV request with one-sided RDMA. Specifically, NICs with one-sided RDMA support can directly rewrite server's memory by parsing the server CPU. Consequently, we can shift the process of the KV request from the server CPU to the faster network. Since the workload is shifted from the server CPU to the client CPU, we call it a client direct design. However, the challenge of using one sided RDMA approach in a client direct design is that one sided RDMA only provides limited abstractions. For example, it only provides simple memory read and write. As a result, we can only efficiently use one-sided RDMA read to travel simple data structure such as a hash table. However, for complex data structure like B tree, multiple round trip times are required for a single key value request. To see this in more details, let's consider using one-sided RDMA read to traverse a B tree index. Due to the uh, due to the weak semantic of one-sided RDMA read. The client can only use can only travel one tree layer using one RDMA round trip time. Consequently, multiple round trip times are required to travel a very large B tree. This results in suboptimal performance, even when sided RDMA is extremely fast. <laughs> A common solution to overcome this issue is to use index caching. This means that we can cache the server B tree at the client. Using the cached copy of the index, client can locally traverse the B tree without using additional round trip times. However, one drawback of a tree based index caching is that it has hu it consumes huge amount of memory at the client. Further, it has huge cache miss cost. For example, when there is a cache miss, one has to fetch the entire B tree internals from the server to the client. While the, the payload of internals is typically much larger than the payload of the key value. Also, the tree index caching is known for costly recursive invalidation, which could fluctuate the performance when, the ca when caching more tree layers. In conclusion, existing approaches of RDMA-enabled keyword store has to make the following trade-offs. For the server-centric designs, they have suboptimal performance and high server CPU usage. When using one-sided RDMA read to reduce the CPU cost with a client-direct design, 
they typically has very poor performance. And in caching can improve the performance, but there are huge memory usage and cache miss cost at the client. So a natural question for us to answer is that can we have a better design with one-sided RDMA? To answer this question, we now present design and implementation of XDOR. So here is an overview of the architecture of XDOR. First, we adopt a hybrid architecture. This means that the update operations, such as insertions, handled by the server RPC. We adopt this hybrid approach like many prior RDMA-based QR store because the next simple semantic cannot support complex update operations like, like tree splits doing insertions. <laughs> For read-only operations such as Git and scan, we follow the client direct design which uses one-sided RDMA to execute them. We further utilize the learned cache with small memory footprint at a client so that the the read-only lockup only uses one long trip times. More specifically, we use a machine learning model as a cache structure for the tree-based index. We are motivated by the learned index, a recently proposed technique which give us a key insight. That is, we can replace the index traversal with the calculation of machine learning models. <laughs> the machine learning models used can have a nice feature that is, they are typically orders of magnitude smaller than a B tree index. So let's look at how we use the learn model as a cache to accelerate the client side key value operations using one sided RDMA. First, we train the models to learn a mapping from the keys to the value addresses at the servers. The learn models, which has small memory usage, are then transferred from the server to the client. Given the learned models, client can use them to look up a given key. Note that the learned model assumes that the key values are stored in a sorted array. So suppose we want to find the address of K1 at the server. So we first use the learned models to predict the possible locations of K1. In this example, it returns that K1 is in the location 0 or 1. Note that the learned models guarantees that the K1 must be in the predict predicted locations. So given these predicted locations, we can now use one RDMA read to check the actual positions of K1. We do this by reading the corresponding keys at locations back to the client. <laughs> back to so after fetching all the keys to client, we can identify that the true locations of K1 is at 1. Consequently, we can use another RDMA round trip to read the key's value back to the client. So there are two direct benefits of using a remote learned cache. First, it only requires one round trip time uh, it only requires one round trip to lock up a given key. Second, the model has ultra small memory, which means that it is possible for us to cache them all at the client. So we have seen that the learned approach sounds straightforward to this problem. We have met one important challenge in applying it as a full functional QR store. Learned models assumes a sorted array, which is inefficient to support for insertions and deletions, <laughs> while these operations are common in dynamic workloads. To see how XDOR efficiently handles dynamic workloads, the outline of the remaining content is as follows. We start from the data structure used at the server. Then we describe how a store client uses the data cache to look up the key within the dynamical close. Finally, we present the evaluation result of XOR. We start from the server side data structure used at XDOR. As we have mentioned before, the key obstacle for efficient insertion and deletion is that the lint models assumes a sorted array to store all the key values. So XDOR does not use a sorted array to, to store the key value pairs. We store them in the B-tree leave nodes as traditional approaches, which is efficient for insertions and deletions. However, there's a problem of using lint model to learn the mappings 
from a given key to the addresses in a dynamic B tree. This is because the model assumes the value addresses are sorted, which are not the cases for a dynamic tree. For example, suppose we have a sample tree, where its leave nodes addresses are sorted. Suppose we want to insert new key, say K1.5. After the insertion, the new leaf nodes address will break the original sorted order of all the leaf nodes addresses. To resolve this issue, we will observe that leaf nodes are logically sorted. Thus, we can assign sorted logical addresses, which can be effectively learned by the models to the leaf nodes. Now, the model, given, given, a, given a lockup key, the model can output the logical addresses of the key. Since the logical addresses cannot be searched with RDMA, we further maintain a translation table, which records the physical address of a leaf node according to its logical addresses. Next, we describe the client-side operations with model and the translation table. So the execution flow is similar to the standard store, <laughs> except we need to additionally store the translation table at the client. And the model and the translation table construct the cache. Then, to call a given key, say K1, like previous example, we first use the model to predict the logical locations of the key. In our example, the logical address is as, as, at 0 and 1. Since we cannot directly search with the logical addresses, we use the transition table to translate the logical addresses to physical ones. In our example, the logical address 0 1 is translated to, to physical address 0. Then we can still use one launch of time to search the given key. One issue to solve the dynamic loss is that cache may become stale due to server insertions. To update the cache when the server request store changes with minimal overhead, we retrain the X caching background. The retrain process is as follows. Upon the insertion, the server will trigger the retrain. Then the updated models are fetched on demand to the client. To further accelerate the retrieve process, XStore organizes model in a recursive model inference data layout, such that it allows the retrain only applies to partial model in a fine-grained way. Finally, background update may cause client's model become stale. Since a stale model, model may result in error, we evaluate it on demand. So there may be model invalidations upon under dynamic workloads, X still can still achieve a good performance since a stale combination of the stale model and transition table can quickly find most existing keys, as long as their physical addresses are not changes. This is because the stale model and transition table still maintains a correct mapping from a key to their physical addresses. So there are many other design details and optimizations. For example, how does XStore coordinate concurrent server operations and the client operations? And how XStore dynamically adjusts the model upon different datasets? Please refer to our paper if you have interests. We end of, of our story of XStore by pre presenting its evaluation results. Specifically, we answer the following three questions. First, how does XStore compare to server-centric designs? Second, how does XStore compare to client direct designs? Finally, does XStore provide a better memory and performance trade off than existing client direct designs? Our variations are conducted on a local cluster with 16 nodes, nodes. Without explicit notation, we dedicate to one node as the XStore server. First, we present the overall peak throughput of XStore in the YCSB workload. We use one server machine with two connectors for NICs. We compare the store with the state-of-the-art RDMA enabled key value stores, including the server-centric and the client-direct designs. First, we can see that XStore achieves a relative high throughput. It can process 40 million requests per second using a single NIC on YCSBC workload. Note that XStore even does not use any of the server CPU to achieve this high throughput. Server-centric designs achieve poor performance because they are bottlenecked by the server CPU for traversing the tree. Client-direct design cell does not perform well because it uses multiple RDMA round-trip times to traverse the B-tree. 
So let's look at the cash used in the YCSBO cloud in more details. For the 100 million key value pairs YCSB dataset, we use 500,000 linear regression models to fit it, <laughs> where each model occupies 14 byte memory in a compressed format. There are two important things we want to mention. First, for simple data sets like YCSB, XDoor can use very few models to achieve relative good performance. Second, the linear regression model provides a, another benefit. It is very fast upon model retraining. For example, when the model is still, it only takes about eight microseconds to retrain a, a, a to retrain the submodel. Finally, we can quickly build the entire egg cache from the scratch. For example, it takes the server about <coughs> about eight seconds to build the entire cache using a single thread. Since a machine learning approach is sensitive to whether it can correctly fit the dataset, we further evaluate XDoor using different datasets. Specifically, we use two synthesis datasets, linear and noise linear, and one real-world dataset, OpenStreetMap. We use a workload, we use a workload similar to YCSBC. First, we can see that the accuracy has more effect to XDoor's peak throughput. This is because there are insufficient models to fit these datasets. Consequently, XDoor must search more keys to find a given key, resulting in more RDMA payload read. To reduce the error, XDoor may use more models to fit the dataset. Second, the accuracy is less sensitive to the latency, since RDMA is less sensitive to, uh, to the payload, payload size. Well, Finally, we examine how XDoor compared with tree index caching. We use YCSBC workload and compare XDoor with B tree index with the same amount of client memory budget. First, XDoor uses much less over memory than tree index caching, thanks to the learn model's small memory footprint. Note that the transit table contributes most of the memory usage at the client. Second, XDoor can achieve well even using nearly zero memory. For example, XDoor can achieve 40 million requests per second when only catch 16 byte model at the client. So there are currently two limitations of XDoor that we plan to address in the future. First, we currently only focus on supporting fixed lens keys. Well, we describe how to handle variable lens keys in the paper. Second, we currently focus on using simple models such as near regression for the cache. However, simple models may result in increased error for complex dataset. Using a more, more sophisticated model, such as neural network, may improve the accuracy, but it is not efficient upon retraining. <laughs> Consequently, we believe there is currently a trade-off between retrain speed, accuracy, and memory usage when selecting the model for the XDoor. Yet we believe the model selection is orthogonal to the design of XDoor, which we plan to explore in the future. In conclusion, XDoor provides a new design point for RDMA enabled QR store. We first adopt a learned approach to accept a tree traversal using one side RDMA. The new design can provide better CPU, memory, and performance trade off than existing designs. Thanks for your listening.